Welcome back to Beyond the Game here at Capers Athletics. Episode 5 now, time flies. Joined by the final one <laughs> of the tri-captains of the women's soccer team, Kara McKinnon finally has a moment in her busy schedule to join us today. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, Kara, uh, I, I guess we'll start with the basics. I mean, it's pretty quick and simple when it comes mm -hmm. to you. Uh, I mean, you're a Westmount girl. Yeah. Uh, cool. Went to Riverview, local kid, grew up watching the Capers, similar to Chelsea Curry last week. Uh, CBU always on your horizon as a kid growing up? Always. I don't think I ever had a plan going somewhere else, watching the Capers growing up, whether it be the basketball team or volleyball or soccer team. I always had a dream of being one. When I was a kid, I knew all of the, I knew all the girls, at least, on the soccer team. I knew where they were from, what position they played, and I just always wanted to be one. Dream come true. You put the orange jersey on the first time uh, four years ago, um, starter pretty much from day one, I think, you walked <laughs> on the way you went. Um, how's that experience been for you over the past four years? Um, it has honestly just been a dream. Like you can't, I couldn't ask for a better university, a better team, better coach. Like I really can't, I've always admired the orange and everything like that, so I can't imagine doing this anywhere else. Now, you're a, a defender, of course, and, mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, your main focus is keeping the ball away from your keeper, and, and I mean, you've obviously, You've done a great job of that over your four years. Uh, one thing you've kind of been known for, though, is also some of those uh, high-flying <laughs> header goals on the set plays. Yeah, I got a couple of them. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think you, you probably have six or seven goals in your career. Uh, I, maybe a couple more. I'm not sure. I think it's, up to it's eight. eight. Is now. it eight? Oh, okay, I'm eight selling now. you shorts. Yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking you're like Sandra when I talked to him last week, and he, he just he scored on the weekend too to prove mm -hmm. me wrong on that. So I owe him one there. But you got eight. <laughs> And what, seven of them off headers? All, all, <laughs> all eight of them. All eight of them off All headers. eight of them with my head. I can't score with my foot. <laughs> Big part of your game, obviously. Something, I, I mean, that's that takes a lot of practice, timing, skill. I mean, always yeah. been a forte? Always been a forte. I don't know what it is about it. I think it's because I've been a defender and then I was always tall. So, you know, they were always like, oh, throw the tall girl up there for the corner <laughs> kicks. Just kick the ball really high and, you know, if she's the tallest, she'll get to it. And somehow, some way, with all that practice, I got good at it. Why oh my. <laughs> uh, business student as well, a BBA mm -hmm. graduate this year. Uh, got a great future ahead of you there too. You already yeah. have some offers on the table from what I understand. Uh, I have already accepted a job actually in Excellent. Halifax, yeah. Heading away from the Cape. I oh, know. sad to Big know. Big change. Big Are we change. allowed to say where you're going? Uh, I think so. Okay. I, I accepted a job at KPMG, mm -hmm. so one of the biggest four accounting firms in the country. That's always nice to know in yeah. uh, September. That yeah, I got the offer in August. Either way. Did they want you to skip your last year's soccer? <laughs> <laughs> no, got to finish. No, you got to get that degree. Got to get the degree. <laughs> yep. uh, academic all Canadian as well. Mm -hmm. All three years you've been here up to now, and I'm sure you'll finish that way as well. That, I, I know, is a big part for your family and you as well. That uh, mm -hmm. That's always been a goal of yours. Uh, academics at CBU lived up to your expectations. Yeah, honestly, I can't, um, I can't complain whatsoever about all of the classes and everything that I've had. The profs in the business school are just amazing, you know. Um, they are very supportive of athletics as well, and then they're just great, like, student-professor relationship yeah. is amazing. Now, uh, looking at the season, uh, you mm -hmm. guys had a, a, a shaky start that first game with UMB. You got mm -hmm. the bugs out. Since then, it's been firing on all Man. cylinders. Uh, I mean, what do you have yeah, since? we're unstoppable. 17 goals since the first game in the next three. Yeah. I think you both uh, scored your opposition 18-1. For 18-1, and, 18 and one, yeah. yeah. So, uh, what changed? I mean, everything just, have you had a start to the season like this before, I guess is the first question. Um, I don't know if we've had a start quite like a, a banging start like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, the tie was, I think we were happy with the tie because it was a little shaky game for anybody who got to watch it. Um, and after that, we've just been rolling. I think we just hit our stride and there's nothing stopping us now. You guys had that long streak, uh, undefeated streak mm. in the AUS, uh, going back, what, a couple years, yeah. and it got snapped at UMB last, last year. year, and I know that was a, a, an issue with the girls. They wanted to get that run in again, uh, regular season. It, it's almost like you came out of the gate this year and punched the rest of the conference in the face, <laughs> and so here we are, I mean, come get us. And, and I mean, it's, I mean eight, 18 goals in four games in women's soccer is quite impressive. It's pretty big, I know. And they've been coming from everybody. Yeah, that's what I love about it. Like, we don't have just one or two people who are scoring. I think there's probably like six or seven girls now on the team that have oh, scored a goal, which is amazing. I love that, you know, everybody thinks maybe Carolyn Blaine's going to be the one to score, so they try to shut down Carolyn Blaine. We got three other girls right behind her that can score. Probably one of the most balanced teams I've seen in your four yeah, years. Yeah, our bench is really deep. 
And you were part, of course, an AUS championship team in your second mm -hmm, year, so I, you know what it takes to win. I do. I was sad. Uh, even my first year, we went undefeated. Second year, went undefeated, and then got the uh, got the win at the end. So I'm really hoping for another <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, Sanibex this Friday mm -hmm. in Antigonish. Uh, I talked about it with Mark Stewart from the men's team earlier. That's always a tough game because it is our traditional rival. Yeah. And then back home right away on Sunday with Acadia, Acadia, who has right now heading into the weekend, we're, we're taping this earlier in the week, of course, is on to feed as well. That could be mm -hmm. a first place showdown. I know. I'm excited for it. The, us and Acadia, or us and X, is always a good battle just because of the rivalry. But this year, the women's squad from X is really good. There'll be good competition. Um, but the game against Acadia is going to be the battle, I think, of the season. Always nice on a Sunday in the cake, nothing better to do. <laughs> um, well, I'll drift away here for a minute. Uh, we, had, we had talked about uh, different things, and I know you know the question's coming, because everyone knows the question's <laughs> coming now. It, it's now obviously bus <laughs> chatter, or residence chatter, and this and that. Um, uh, I don't know if I should ask you first, or I should talk about that. Yeah, go ahead. What, tell me something that we don't know about Karen McKinnon. You're a four-time academic, three-time academic all Canadian. You've been a starter on this team forever. You're obviously a defensive force and a, and a captain, a great leader. Um, everyone knows that, Karen McKinnon. And, and I'm sure everyone in Cape Breton knows a lot more, but what's something we don't know? Um, something that most people don't know, my team was lucky enough to discover this weekend, is that I have a phobia of birds. A bird phobia. <laughs> it's really weird. Oh, it's an Alfred and I can't, I can't <laughs> explain it whatsoever, but I have a a phobia of birds. Now, when you say phobia, like just do uh, you see one on the windowsill, are you kind of losing it, or do they have to be close to you? Um, all, every and all kind of birds, I swear. It's really more if they're around me, <laughs> like swarming. I don't know, I can't do it. Now you're walking to the car in the parking lot out here, and there's a bunch of pigeons roaming Yeah, around. I'll, I'll take a longer way around if there's birds. Now, I wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> I mean, a uh, uh, tough nose defender. Um, <laughs> we, we know you're a kickboxer. You like doing yeah. that. You're, you're a great <laughs> multi-sport athlete. You did some time with our women's basketball team your mm -hmm. first year. Uh, did you play volleyball in high school as well? I played volleyball in I high mean, school, yeah. And you're scared of, scared of Tweety Bird. Birds. <laughs> yes, any and all kinds of birds. I'm glad that so they found great. out before we exposed it here. <laughs> Kara, it was great seeing you. Thank Thanks you. for coming by, and best of luck the rest of the season. Thank you very much. I look forward to it. Catch us next week on Beyond the Game. <laughs>